Let's look at some examples of relations and decide whether we have symmetry, reflexivity, let me list them in order that the chapter does, reflexivity, trans, uh, symmetry, and or transitivity. Um, okay, so take a look at this first relation. Remember, all relations are collections of ordered pairs of elements from, from some set. So what set is this a relation on? Well, I can see that the elements in the ordered pairs are the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. So with such a small amount of elements, it may be helpful just to sort of write those elements down. So this is the set A, the set of those four numbers, and the relation I can express with some arrows. So saying that 0, 0, or 0 is related to 0, 0, 0 is in the relation R1, I can demonstrate that by drawing a line like this. So 0 is related to itself. Similarly, 0 is related to 1, can be drawn like this. 0 is related to 3, 1 is related to 1, 1 is related to 0, 2 is related to 3, and finally 3 is related to 3. So this diagram right here gives us a visual of the relation R1. Let's check the properties of reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity one by one. So reflexivity would say that for all x in A, x is related to x. So R1 is standing for the relation. I'm writing the character R for reflexivity. So is it the case that for every single number in A, 0, 1, 2, or 3, that that number is related to itself? Well, the answer is no. So R1 is not reflexive. And that's because 2 doesn't appear to be related to itself. So I can say it like this. 2 is not related to 2, or I can say 2 comma 2 is not in R1. Okay, let's check symmetry. So in order for this relation to be symmetric, this is what I would have to observe. For all x and y in the set A, if x is related to y, then y is related to x. Let's take a look. Um, I do see that 1 is related to 0, and 0 is related to 1. I do see that 0 is related to 3, but uh-oh, 3 is not related to 0. And actually, over here, I've got an issue as well. 2 is related to 3, but 3 is not related to 2. So to demonstrate that um, this relation is not symmetric, all I need to do is break this for all statement. I need to provide an example of a pair of numbers in A such that X is related to Y, but Y is not related to X. So um, I'm going to write that out. R1 is not symmetric. And here's my demonstration. Note that, um, for example, 0, 3 is in R1, but 3, 0 is not in R1. All right, there's my demonstration. Finally, transit transitivity. Let's re recall what we would need to have in order for R1 to be transitive. Anytime R is related to Y and Y is related to Z, I must have that X is related to Z. Let's check it out. You just got to kind of look at all the arrows and see what you can find. Um, I do see that, let's, let's see here. Um, <laughs> 1 is related to 0 and 0 is related to 3 and yet 1 is not related to 3. So I think I've found that R1 is not transitive either. So R1 is not transitive. Again, breaking transitivity is, is somewhat like breaking the others. Um, I just need to demonstrate a situation where this part of the conditional is true and yet the conclusion is false. So I'm going to go ahead and do 1, 0, and 3. So note that 1, 0 is in R1 and 0, 3 is in R1, but 1, 3 is not in R1. Okay, there you have it. This, this relation is not reflexive, not symmetric, and it's not transitive either. I've just went ahead and modified um, these two relations slightly, or sorry, I've modified relation number one in two different ways. I'm going to draw the diagrams real quick, and then um, we're going to check the properties one by one again. All right, so I've modified the original relation in a couple different ways, and I want to test to see 
whether I have reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity, just as I did before. Let me change all these to twos here. And then at the bottom, we're going to test um, uh, relation number three. Okay, so I sort of like added some points and removed some points um, to make these two different relations from R1. And I've drawn the appropriate diagrams to represent. So in R2, I've just added two edges, and I want to see, you know, what properties this relation has. Um, still, uh, R3 is not, or pardon me, R2 is not reflexive for the same reason as R1 is in. I don't have the point 2, 2 in there. So R2 is not reflexive. 2, 2 is simply not in R2. Um, symmetric, let's see, I, st I still think that this relation is not symmetric, again, for the reason before. I've got 0, 3 in there, but I don't have 3, 0. So R2 is not symmetric. Let me just say as before. But I do think that I fixed transitivity. So take a look. This is a little bit subtle. Um, transitive. It's too much to write all of those out here. Um, uh, looking at the diagram, we do see that that's the case. All right, let's move down to this next relation here. Um, I've actually fixed the reflexivity of the relation. So you can see for each element in A, 0, 1, 2, and 3, x comma x is in R3. So in other words, x is related to x for every single x in A. So R3 is reflexive by looking at the picture or observing that, um, that this holds true. Um, what about symmetry? Nope, I still do not have uh, symmetry here. R3 is not symmetric. Again, 0 is related to 3, but 3 isn't related to 0. And there's a couple other um, problems in there as well. So is not symmetric as before. And maybe this is the most, most subtle one of all of them. Um, this relation is transitive. Uh, the point is that, you know, the front end of this conditional is just very rarely satisfied. Um, so, I mean, take a look. Zero is related to one, but one isn't really related to anything else. So I don't really have a zero, one, and then one, and then some other num number to check. Um, oh, I do have zero is related to one, and one is related to one, but we, as we've noted before, that easily gives us that zero is related to one. So the conditional is true when either one of these fragments is, is a... Um, a double. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to find an arrangement of two arrows sort of in sequence um, at all in this diagram. So there's really nothing to check. This is almost vacuously true if you're ignoring the, the loops in the graph. So R3 does end up being transitive. Okay, and that's simply because every single time this arrangement holds true, the back end holds true as well. Okay, so uh, when, you're, when your set A is small enough these diagrams are useful in uh, checking these three properties. We're not always going to have that situation, so we have to think about the properties logically. Um, let's go ahead and run through a couple more examples and just analyze these relations as to whether they're reflexive, symmetric, or transitive. So the set here is um, the power set of some non-empty set. I mean, that, that's a set that we're going to define the relation on. So this relation, which they're calling U, it's not a union or anything. It's just a symbol that's standing for a relation, um, is defined in the following way. So we're going to call two subsets of X related to each other if they're not equal to each other. It's a weird thing to define, but that's what we're doing. Um, so again, the, the power set of X is the set on which the relation that we're defining um, lies. And given any two elements of that set, we define relation if the sets are not equal to each other. Okay, so let's check reflexivity. I claim this U relation is not reflexive because, for example, I mean, you know, take a specific element of the power set of x. How about x? x is an element of the power set. The empty set is also an element of the power set, if you like. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, wait a minute. End power. Let x be a non-empty set. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. The empty set's also an element of the power set. Um, what was I saying? So here's the thing. x 
is definitely not related to itself via this relation because x is not not equal to itself. <laughs> x is equal to itself. So that's the opposite of being not equal to itself. So u is not reflexive. Symmetric, um, yeah, actually it is. u is symmetric. And you just got to think about it for a second. Um, if a is related to B, then what that means is that A is not equal to B. But that means that B is not equal to A, so B is related to A. This is super awkward because my U is looking like a union. I'm just going to come back and like put a little curl on it or something because I don't want it to be confused with, with the union symbol. So let's, let's imagine that they have used a better symbol for their, for their relation. Um, okay, finally, transitivity. Transitivity, I don't, I mean, pause the video, but I don't think that this is uh, transitive. So this is not transitive. Tran Oops. I have an example in mind. I'm going to go back to the set X and the set empty set, which I know are two different elements um, of the, the power set. So observe, note that, let's see here, empty set is related to X because these two sets are not the same. It's given that X is a non-empty set and X is related to the empty set. I've just stated um, the same thing in a different way, but they're but they're both you know true statements, and yet, so if this um, relation were to be transitive, I should be able to conclude from this that empty set is related to the empty set, but that's not true. Empty set is equal to the empty set, so I have that empty set is not related to itself. So that, that proves that this relation is not transitive. Okay, so we have to be able to deal with um, these three properties in situations where we don't really have a good drawing of the relation or the set that it's defined on. This is just a very abstract thing. I'm just arguing from, from, the, um, from the definitions. All right, same with this. Uh, I've got this sort of um, example given to me in words. The set is all the people living in the world, great. And we're gonna define a relation on that set. P is related to Q if P lives within 100 miles of Q. So go ahead and see if you can figure out whether this relation is reflexive, symmetric, or transitive. Pause the video and come back. All right, would you decide? Um, reflexive, yes, everybody lives within 100 miles of themselves. Yes, people. Eat, let's say each person lives within 100 miles of themselves. Okay, symmetric. Yeah, I think so. If I live within 100 miles of you, then you live within 100 miles of me. Let me write that out. And finally, transitivity. No, I don't think so. I mean, I'm going to draw a little diagram here. Let's say person P does live within... 100 miles of Q, let's say they're like 95 miles apart, and then in, maybe just in a direct line, Q lives another 95 miles away from a person S. Then if, if this is a straight line, P lives way further away from S than 100 miles. So this relation is not transitive. So P can live Okay, there you go.